Okay, there we go. Oh wait. Um, are we live? Oh, Sorry. We no, are no, live. I'm good. I'm multitasking, and I should not have been. Um, no worries. I got the intro. Welcome to office hours. How are we doing, everybody? Um, it's been a minute. Uh, a lot of stuff going on, obviously, but we're thankful that that you're all here joining us. Um, <laughs> pardon me, I literally just got back from running and stuff, so I'm 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 looking a little rough out here. But Nora, how you doing? Um, I hate that question these days. Not because you asked it. Like, how is anyone okay? The world is sh like, okay, I'm fine on the day. This is a very honest answer. I'm fine on the day today. And in the big picture, there's multiple genocides happening. My home country is in the midst of a serious global conflict. Like there's still a revolution happening there also. Um, and every day people who are fighting for freedom and justice are being attacked. Like, like this is, we, de we deserve such a better world. And so 110%. Yes. I think and feel very deeply about these things. This is why I work with musicians because art and culture has the power and the ability to reach people and mobilize people to move and change and feel in a way that like no amount of logic or debate or discussion can do. We relate emotionally to each other. We see our commonalities through art, through culture, through music. So this is why I do what I do. Like, this is why I do what I do. Um, and so for those of you who are being silent or you're afraid that, oh, I don't want to alienate my fans by speaking up. Like, don't be a coward. We have these coward. platforms for, for a reason. Use them. You have a chance to use them uh, for good. And, and and word to the people that are, are doing as such, because uh, it's not it's a it's a uh, a daunting task when you clearly see like algorithm algorithm excuse me pushing us out of the way and stuff like that but i don't care that's not an excuse uh to not talk about these issues and i am kind of tired of seeing people talk about that being as such well and this is why like like if you rely on the algorithm the algorithm will always control your behavior and if you're <laughs> Worried about the algorithm being the middle person between you and your audience, you're not doing a good job of building your audience. And if you're, as a consumer, you're relying on the algorithm to show you who you should be paying attention or listening to, you're also not taking you're taking responsibility for the power and agency that you have as a fan, as a consumer, to be proactive, to to create a list and say, these are the people I want to look at and see what they're sharing, regardless of whether or not the algorithm shows it to me. And Meta, which is Facebook, which is Instagram, which is a lot of the other platforms that people use, is actually hiding political content. And they get to decide what's political. So office hours could be political, right? Like music stuff could be political and they're hiding it and they're not gonna show it to you on your explore page. So what does that do? It moves people's behavior to be less political, which in and of itself is political. So I know we said we were gonna talk about aging today and maybe we will, we will, I mean, I'm sure we will, but like this is also like, we cannot blame the algorithm for everything. And if people are like, oh, I don't know what to do. These are really simple things that you could do to take responsibility and be proactive for what happens on your phone, like you can rely on the algorithm or you can be more intentional. In the last couple of weeks, everyone on my timeline has been talking about three uber powerful, uber wealthy rappers who don't actually like aren't doing anything, aren't saying anything really worth saying or doing or talking about. And none of those three rappers has said anything about what's happening in the world in any meaningful way but people are giving them so much attention, so much time, so much energy. Cool. I'm not saying don't talk about that, but also talk about the other things that are happening in the world. You can do both. It doesn't have to be all or nothing, but if that's all you're doing, that's not like at this day and age, like that's not cool. Right. And um, I'm, 
I don't like, I just, I feel like I'm going, like, I'm like, is, like, are we all not living in the same world? Do you not see the interconnections, the intersectionalities? Cause especially being a Middle Easterner, a person of diaspora in the U S and looking at people in the U S like just not giving a shit, like not like, even though it's the U S that's fueling and funding so much of what's happening in other countries all around the world, like, This is also why people should stop asking me how I'm doing because I'm no longer going to say, oh, like don't. And so this is not to you. This is just, and you just sent me off on a rant now. Um, like this is part of one of the ways that we stay complicit is people say, how are you? And you say, I'm fine. And it erases the reality of how shitty things are in the world. And if we all gave ourselves permission to talk about it and name it more, then maybe it would move us to take more action. So that's where I'm at. The world Understandably is Understandably so. I, I get it. I definitely get it. Um, yeah, not entirely sure where to go from there, but... Um... Okay, here's the transition. Here's the transition. So today's episode is about aging. And not just the music business, but like white supremacist patriarchal capitalism loves youth. Why? Because youth can be exploited for labor, can be exploited for consumerism, can be taken advantage of, can be sh like, there's a reason, like you really have to look at why do we prioritize and like y celebrate youthfulness or youth, not even youthfulness, but youth, and then shame aging, which is a normal, natural thing that happens to all human beings. And so what we hear, so, so this is the transition because it's easy to manipulate and exploit a young person. And as you mm -hmm. get older, ideally, you're learning more, you're standing on your ground, you see the scams, you see the things, so you feel more power, more agency in speaking up. And so this is part of why the industry likes to prey on youth. This is why a lot of commercials like to prey on youth, why a lot of ads are targeted at youth, because that's what capitalism values. So long story short for today's episode, as we're like seven, almost eight minutes in, is there is no such thing as being too old for the music industry. It might be different. It might have different challenges, whatever, whatever. But it's never too late to start. It's never too late to put yourself out there. It's never too late to perform. It's never too late to learn a new skill or try something new. I had a client today who was like, dang, I feel old because we were working on some social media stuff. That's OK. Be old and be imperfect. Like. So I'm I'm I'm, you know, I'm going on, but that's the transition. Back to you. Per no, perfect, perfect. I mean, yeah. Um, Nora nailed it at the at the beginning. You know, with you know a, a lot of what's advertised and marketed to us is uh, for for youth or whatever. Um, even not even like things that we believe <laughs> to be otherwise. Even things as simple as like superheroes. Like it's not about. I mean, I'm not saying that authors and stuff like that don't have actual stories, but if you actually go back, it's about selling toys to kids. It's not about the the bigger, you know, picture and art of it all. It, it goes back even with movies and stuff like that. It's about getting kids in there, you know, um, even with like movie ratings. You know, that's why you don't you don't see a ton of rated R movies is because you can't get kids in there, and that loses them money in terms of ticket sales. So. <clears throat> Hopefully, uh, we all you know enter this conversation understanding that that's a lot of how capitalism you know operates. But that's not to say that we have to operate within those means. And if we take a second to even zoom out a bit, there are a lot of artists that are like I and I don't I don't know what what you hear, Nora, but like I always hear artists like if I don't make it by age thirty, like oh shit, I'm done. But it's like yo, there are so many artists out there still doing their thing way past 30. Now, the first argument I always get is like, well, they have a label and a machine behind them. And like, sure, in some cases, absolutely. But in other cases, definitely not. 
And even when you look at like, you know, other older acts that are touring and stuff like that, like a lot of times we're not seeing like this huge marketing push for them, especially not, and sometimes not even from their labels that they're signed to, because it's all about the younger talent and, you know, again, getting the, the youth uh, engaging and all that other stuff. But, but again, to say that like um, you have to make it by a certain checkpoint or especially 30 of all ages. Why, why 30? Who decided 30? Where did that number come mm -hmm. right? Like, these are all arbitrary things. And one of the things that's really, I think that's fed into this is we see all these lists now of 30 under 30 and 40 under 40. First of all, some of those lists people pay to get on. So they're not- Say that one more time. Say that one more time. Some of those lists people pay to get on. So they don't actually really mean anything other than someone had a connection or a publicist or some ca and or some cash. But also like, again, these are arbitrary things. The other thing is, do not compare yourself to other artists. It doesn't matter what so-and-so did or what so-and-so is doing or how old so-and-so was. When, because if you, and we say this every, every episode, if you figure out who your fan base is and you build a direct relationship to them, which means they might not want the same thing from you that they want from the 12, you know, from the artist that's speaking to the 12 year old market. Cause you're not a 12 year old. You're not a 20 year old. You're not a 25 year old. Like really think about that. So if you understand who your audience is and rather than trying to replicate or duplicate what everyone else is doing, you figure out who your audience is and what you can provide to them that nobody else can provide. Right. And that might be the content that might be the way you, you might do like, Sunday afternoon events because that's nap time for children. I don't know, you're the parent and you're the artist. So you get to do that kind of really tailored, unique, thoughtful programming. And that's how you meet the needs of your art, your, your fan base. And they get something from you that they're not getting from anyone else because of your age. So all that to say like, y'all really be thinking that your age is a detriment rather than thinking about how you can use it as an asset to build really intimate relationships with your fans who will then love you, support you, trust you, follow through on your calls to action, so on and so forth. Like all this like barrier stuff, it's all, it's all made up. The real barriers are, I have a mortgage. I have a kid. I'm trying to pay my rent. I'm tired from full-time job. Like those are the things that we can talk about like, okay, yeah, those are barriers, but otherwise your age means nothing. And maybe if you're trying to get signed to a label, but you got to think about why is that even your goal? And there are so many other ways to be successful in the industry. So as soon as you take that out of the conversation, how does your age become relevant to anything? It doesn't. And, and that's a lot of like, what we talk about here regardless is like if 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 you're basing your success of what you're seeing on the timeline and what you're seeing in the the news and and celebrities and stuff like that like like we completely understand why you would feel like oh shit like i have to make it by a certain age or i'm or i'm through but Again, our whole thing is, well, <laughs> like, even with that logic, like, I wish artists would understand, like, so, okay, so wait a minute. So you're going to blow up before age 30, and then you hit age 30, and then just, like, that's it? Like, we're cutting, you, that's it? Like, there, there's no way you're going to access new fans and stuff like that? Like, it just it doesn't make sense. And so you want fans, again, the, the real supporters and fans that you get, like, you want them here for the rest of your your career, like, well into your 50s, 60s, and whatnot. So, you know, having that really, good Lord, quick checkpoint um, of 30 years old specifically, let alone younger, is just wild. Is wild. Well, and I think still part of what you're talking about is it's one thing to start later. But I think what you're talking yeah. about is also, like, continuing once you've gotten started. And I think mm -hmm. once you've gotten started, it's easier maybe to stay in it because – 
that momentum will carry you and like whatever, whatever. Right. But you can also start like you can also start at any point and you can change your mind and you can start again later. Like these things don't have don't have deadlines or expiration dates. Um, and again, this comes back to if you get to decide the kind of career you want to have and then you build around that, your age becomes irrelevant. Exactly. Along with like so many of these other factors that we've talked about on, on this show is that like, it's so important that we, we want you all to like actually connect with your supporters. Like for some reason still in 2024, like uh, creatives really just be treating their followers like streaming bots and, and then wonder why they don't actually engage. And so, you know, especially at, at, during this time and stuff like that, like if you're able to hold that connection with your supporters that, like Nora said, the age, the algorithm, the the playlist placements, the the blog postings, the, the I don't know, this thinking you have to come up with all these skits and stuff like that to be successful. Like all that goes out the window because you're just being yourself. You're allowing things to play out as they need to, and you're being patient with yourself. And so, you know, I, the age thing is always just an interesting conversation just because like, I mean, good Lord, we and Nora are over our thirties here. And so we're not going nowhere, like shit. <laughs> like, so <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's also like, I think fans want to see an evolution in artists. And mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you and I have talked about this, but I think a lot about like the artists that I was listening to when I was younger, who still have careers now. Oh and I can only think of maybe one of them who has evolved and grown up. The rest of them are in their 40s, 50s, 60s, still making the same music, talking about the same thing that they did back then. And I think a mm -hmm. lot of artists who are early in their career feel like, well, that's the only thing I can talk about. Or I have to write, they're trying to... And you don't like make grown up music, make mature music, make like parent hip hop. Like, I don't know, but like, no, you're right. And it might take longer to catch on. And that's okay. But people, yeah. again, it comes back to, if you know your audience and are ready to say, look, this is who I want to make music for. You can make something really special. So I personally, like I'm bored of hearing grown ass men make the same music that they've been making for 20 years. Like what? You haven't gone to therapy and learned anything? You haven't, you don't think that your audience has gone to therapy and grown out of you? Um, which also then brings me to the other thing about ageism because there is a serious double standard, especially in hip hop, but really like, in music and performance, like visual, like performative arts, right? Like in film is that women get it so much worse than men. Men are allowed to age and no one critiques, well, why is your, you know, go dye your hair or go get, you know, plastic surgery or da, 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 da. Whereas women are, and not to say it doesn't happen and not to say that there isn't like pressure on dudes in the same way, but women, there's, there's a lot of pressure, especially because women are also expected to be hypersexual and hyper, the, <coughs> excuse me, the pressure on aging is so much different for women. And I think because of that, there's a lot of space for women to be like, fuck that shit. I'm going to like, to lean into it. Right. Like there's, there's a power, not just like politically and all of that, but there's a power in terms of there's like a market that is so tired of that narrative. And it's wide open for someone to come in and say, I reject that narrative. And mm -hmm. then into the thing that they're criticizing, like there's a space for that. And especially now, as I think we see more and more women like push back against some of these patriarchal narratives and these expectations of like sexism and things like that girl, like get old, get old boldly, 
and still do the thing that you, especially for older women who might have come up in a generation where they were told that's not for girls. Yeah. And so there's something here about like, give yourself permission to do it now, even if it's not for, and listen, this is the other thing, like, do, maybe it's just for you. Maybe you just want to make music and share it. Maybe you just want to go on TikTok and do a little dance. Maybe you just want to draw for yourself. Right. That's valid. Like that counts. That matters. Um, and so I think we focus a lot. And obviously, because office hours is for like artists and entrepreneurs, but you're never like, listen, all of this to say you're never too old, no matter what they say to you. Ever, ever. And I, you know, uh, like again, even thinking about it in like the grand scheme, like it's just give yourself a chance to to try to try these new things and stuff like that. And I just wanted to go back to the, the sex of the bit, like you know, to be clear, the the age thing like with women is still happening right now. Yeah. Like it's not just some like you know, just like vintage sexism stuff. Like you you can very blatantly see the. The, the overtones of how the mainstream wants it to run. But there are so many artists um, out here uh, that are pushing back against that, like your China Streets, your Shea Noirs, your your Love the Geniuses and stuff like that. Uh, Sarah, the instrumentalists, like so many of them that are pushing back against that narrative. And so, you know, you don't have to lean into it. And, and like Nora said, like, it's not, we're not just talking about like, yeah, political, blah, blah, blah. Like, it, it's, it's a thing that's like, like all you have to do, open up your Twitter app right now. If you're following any version of hip hop, anything, you can see the discrepancy between men and women when it comes to aging and stuff like that. So, um, you know, before I start seeing people in the comments being like, ah, oh, wow, dudes have to go through it too. Like, yes, we do. But like, it's not nearly as bad. Um, one thing like I would encourage people to do if you're watching and especially if you're an artist, like especially if you're an entrepreneur, because support other people the way you want to be supported. Make sure you're following older artists. Make sure you're interacting with older artists. Like you might have to do, and this is what I was talking about earlier, you might have to do the work of like looking for them. Stowe just named a whole bunch of women you should be checking out. But this is, again, like, if you're intentional about, because there's also something about you don't know what you don't know. So if you've created a world around yourself where all you're seeing are young artists, you're going to think that that's all it is. And you don't even know that there's a whole world over here that you don't even know about. You don't know what you don't know. So your job is to be intentional about making sure you're seeing as broad a scope as possible. Um, shout out to India who's here. Gluten-free mommy said, this literally just made me think of this tweet that said, people say gone too soon when someone under 25 passes, but calls people over 25 old. Um, you know, like age is weird. We have these ways of thinking about youth and, and especially now where there's like, Oh, the generation, listen, the generation wars. Oh, boomers, millennials. Ge that's all a distraction. I do super agree with that. It's kind of crazy. It's such a distraction to get us to think that we're the problem rather than the systems that have failed us. Right? Gen Z isn't like, doesn't hate millennials. Gen Z is mad because millennials didn't do what we were supposed to do to protect them from this shitty world we're living in. It's not- That they set up for us. That the boomers set up for us. <laughs> and now poor Gen Z has to fix it. Um, India says people in their ageism corrupts everything. Capitalism is dividing. Exactly. And so ageism becomes a way to divide and conquer. Oh, you're old. Oh, you're young. Oh, I can take advantage. Ageism is such an easy thing to divide and conquer people. Absolutely. And notice how it goes both ways. Oh, well, you're too young. You don't know enough to have an opinion. Oh, well, you're too old. So you don't know what you're talking about. Like, so what, you know, no one wins. And so that's why it's just, 
that's why these conversations are super important. And that's why, again, it's just removing that narrative of, of ageism is important. Um, y'all, we're at half hour. Um, well, hold up. What? Somebody has a workshop coming up. Oh, I do have a workshop coming up. Thank you. I do have a workshop coming up. Um, I love if, how you like were like what? Like it didn't come. I know. I was like, like my brain is like so somewhere else. Um, I do. I have a workshop coming up on April twenty third and on April twenty fifth. You can choose which day you want to come to. It's pay what you can, donation based, so accessible as fuck, virtual, and it's all about finding your audience and finding your niche. So as when I talk to artists, I'm always like, who's your audience? And they say, everybody. And I'm like, nope, everybody cannot be your audience. And then I say, well, okay, tell me about them. And they're like, well, ages 16 to 34. And I'm like, nope, demographics can't be your audience. So this workshop is going to help you really figure out who your customer is so that you can interact with them, engage with them, build a real relationship with them so that they can then be inspired to buy into you and do the things that you want them to do. Um, and I will put it in the comments. I'll put the link for that in the comments, but you can also find it in my link tree and my socials, um, all the things. But for gonna, those of you- I'm gonna put it in the uh, description too here in a second. I just got a full link from the newsletter. Oh, thank you. Um, did you get my newsletter today? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. See, friends, let yeah, this a, be a yeah, I meant to text you about that. I forgot. Hey, you should get a newsletter because see how it comes up? If Sto if I hadn't sent my newsletter, Sto wouldn't have had it top of mind to remind me today. So we practice what we teach. Um, so thanks for reminding me. Um, but yeah, if y'all are interested, you're curious, come through. Indio, it is in my newsletter. Um it is in my newsletter that went out today. There's also a dope ass song by my Khalil and low key in my newsletter today. Um, as you know, as we talk about artists who um, are speaking up and using their platform in meaningful ways. So if you come, you know, come for the workshop, if you don't come for the workshop, come for the, the good music. And there's some anti-capitalist stuff in there as always. Um, what, what's it called again? I'm just typing. I'm literally typing it out live in our description right now. The workshop. Everyone yeah. is not your audience. It's called everyone is not your audience. Okay. I like asking. All right. Let me see. Okay. In about a second or two, as Especially if you're watching, uh, like later on, the link should be uh, in the description. So make sure you check that out. Thank you, Sto. Um, I can also put it here in the chat if folks need it. Um, come through. My workshops are fun. They're interactive. You walk away with real stuff. Um, Sto and I are also working on a workshop coming soon. Um, that's going to be, wait, can I tell them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we've got a workshop coming up on rollouts and we'll have you mapping out your whole like rollout. So um, you're never too old. Use your platform for change. Sign up for my workshop. Get a newsletter. Perfect. Nailed it. First try. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yo, we appreciate everyone coming back. Uh, uh, to check us out for, for episode 77. Um, I believe we'll be back next Tuesday on Twitter and potentially next Thursday on Instagram. I don't, I don't know. Well, I'll tell but, you all right. We'll be April 19th on Instagram, April 23rd on Twitter, and then back May 7th um, on this channel on YouTube where we're going to talk about unlearning perfectionism, which a lot of you let your perfectionism get in the way and sabotage you putting things out there. And so we're going to talk about that on the seventh. So lots of you know, make sure you're subscribed. So you get to know all these things, make sure you're liking and sharing so other people can learn what you're learning. Um, Slide in the DMs if Stone and I can support you with anything. We want to see artists succeed. Um, and yeah, see you drink water, get some rest, and we'll see you soon. Peace.
Thanks. Bye.